Browns versus the Hawkeyes. This is a strong, strong interstate rivalry, but it, very few people know how this really began. The history of the Cyhawk Showdown is part of an upcoming documentary. Ben Godar, director of Birth of the Cyhawk, joins us now to talk a little bit more about this project. This is so interesting. Most of us think that the Cyhawk Showdown has been around you know, since the beginning of time. Yeah. But it did start back in the 1900s, right? Yeah, and I don't remember the first year, but it was not too long after the turn of the century, and they, they kind of played off and on for a while there. Um, but they, they last played in the 1930s, and then there was a, actually a 43-year hiatus where they didn't play uh, until 1977. And then in 77, after uh, state legislators had you know, passed resolutions saying these two teams should play, finally the schools agreed to play. And, uh, and that's kind of where the, the story that I'm telling in this film begins. Um, and uh, it was at that point that a group of uh, ordinary guys, they kind of call themselves bowling buddies. They were really drinking buddies. Well, <laughs> you know, I think, that's, I think that's very much true. But uh, uh, Bob Utes, who was kind of the instigator of it, he was just in the car with his family one day, and he said, you know, there ought to be a trophy for this game. Somebody should, should give away a trophy. And his, one of his sons said, why don't you do it? And, and that was the spark. So he got together with this group of guys and said, well, you know, what do you guys think? And they, they pitched in uh, money. They designed. They had this trophy built. And uh, then they had the, the difficult task of trying to convince the universities t to give away this trophy that they'd made. It blows my mind that the universities were originally reluctant to this because when you think about how much money is made and the hype yeah. now on the Cyhawk showdown, but mm -hmm. why were they reluctant at first? Well, you know, and we've, we've talked to uh, uh, folks like uh, Ron Gonder, who's a longtime mm -hmm. Iowa mm -hmm. broadcaster and, and, you know, kind of knows some of the, the history of that. And, you know, it sounds like a lot of it just sort of came down to some of the kind of politics. And, uh, you know, at the time, Iowa and the Big Ten was a little more of a kind of prominent football school. Iowa State was still playing in a smaller stadium, maybe didn't have quite the facilities. So, you know, there was a little bit of that. But also, it, you know, it is somewhat unusual to have rivals that aren't in the same conference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were never going to have a conference game together. So there were some difficulties there. But, um, you know, eventually they got over the politics and, of course, got the got the series restarted. So. One of the things I said, so this this trophy like where does it belong where did it originate and I said oh the Greater Des Moines Athletic Club what is that <laughs> well that was you know so uh, Bob Utes and this uh, group of guys who who came up and, and designed this they said well you know we if we're going to give a trophy away we have to be some kind of an organization so sort of in a little you know wink to the Heisman Trophy uh, they uh, dubbed themselves the Greater Des Moines Athletic Club and uh, so they uh, they you know gave the trophy away um, and uh, of course, it was interesting that first year they they took this trophy and they went and they you know they met with officials from the two universities. Mm -hmm. and their reaction was essentially, well, you know, who the heck are you guys, right? These right, are just some right. kind of guys off the street. So, uh, and they went you know went all over. They tried to find sponsors. They tried to do all kinds of things. They ended up uh, getting a meeting with uh, uh, Bob Ray, the governor at the time, and uh, they found out that he had a daughter at Iowa and a daughter at Iowa State. Perfect. Was going to be attending the game and sitting on one half one side and one half the other side. And somehow they convinced him that he should give out this trophy to the winner of the game. And, and he did. And so then this, of course, became the, you know, the Cyhawk trophy that went to the winner of the game. OK, so quickly, um, you're in post-production right now with yes. this documentary. And yes. I know there are a lot of Cyclone and Hawkeye fans out there who want to see this, you know, make it through production Absolutely. and show. So how do you go about um, funding? I mean, I, this is yes. hard when you are <laughs> trying to put together a documentary all on your own. How, where do you go is. to help? Well, yeah, and we've, we've, done, we've shot most of the film already, so the production is really done. We're in post-production. Uh, we're running a crowdfunding campaign right now uh, through Indiegogo, so they can find Birth of the Cyhawk there. They can also just go to our website, which is cyhawkdocumentary.com, and that will link them there. Um, but yeah, they can donate. They can help us uh, get this film completed. We're even running a contest. Whichever uh, fan base donates more, we're going to premiere the film in, <laughs> oh, in their there city. There you go. So it's on. <laughs> yes, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> All right, Ben, thank you so much oh, for you joining for us. Me. I love this idea. And we'll be right back.